Dred Scott v. Sanford, 60 U.S. 393, 1856. 3. 1. The facts upon which the plaintiff relies did not give him his freedom and make him a citizen of Miss or I. 2. 1. But if the plea in abatement is not brought up by this writ of error, the objection to the citizenship of the plaintiff is still apparent on the record, as he himself, in making out his case, states that he is of African descent, was born a slave, and claims that he and his family became entitled to freedom by being taken by their owner to reside in a territory where slavery is prohibited by act of Congress, and that, in addition to this claim, he himself became entitled to freedom by being taken to Rock Island, in the state of Illinois, and being free when he was brought back to Missouri, he was, by the laws of that state, a c at i's n, 2, if, therefore, the facts he states do not give him or his family a right to freedom, the plaintiff is still a slave, and not entitled to sue as a citizen, and the judgment of the circuit court was erroneous on that. Ground also, without any reference to the plea in abatement. 3. The circuit court can give no judgment for plaintiff or defendant in a case where it has not jurisdiction, no matter whether there be a plea in abatement or not. And unless it appears upon the face of the record, when brought here by writ of error, that the circuit court had jurisdiction, the judgment must be reversed. The case of Capron v. Van Norden, 2 Cranch 126, examined, and the principles thereby decided reaffirmed. 4. When the record, as brought here by writ of error, does not show that the circuit court had jurisdiction, this court has jurisdiction to review and correct the error like any other error in the court. Below. It does not and cannot dismiss the case for want of jurisdiction here, for that would leave the erroneous judgment of the court below in full force, and the party injured without remedy. But it must reverse the judgment and, as in any other case of reversal, send a mandate to the circuit court to conform its judgment to the opinion of this court. 5. The difference of the jurisdiction in this court in the cases of writs of error to state courts and to circuit courts of the United States pointed out, and the mistakes made as to the jurisdiction of this court. In the latter case by confounding it with its limited jurisdiction in the former. 6. If the court reverses a judgment upon the ground that it appears by a particular part of the record that the circuit court had not jurisdiction, it does not take away the jurisdiction of this court to examine. Into and correct, by a reversal of the judgment, any other errors, either as to the jurisdiction or any other matter where it appears from other parts of the record that the circuit court had fallen into error. On the contrary, it is the daily and familiar practice of this court to reverse on several grounds where more than one error appears to have been committed. And the error of a circuit court in its J or I S D I C T I on page 60 U S 395 stands on the same ground and is to be treated in the same manner as any other error upon which its judgment is founded. 7. The decision, therefore, that the judgment of the circuit court upon the plea in abatement is erroneous is no reason why the alleged error apparent in the exception should not also be examined. And the judgment reversed on that ground also, if it discloses a want of jurisdiction in the circuit court. 8. It is often the duty of this court after having decided that a particular decision of the circuit court was erroneous, to examine into other alleged errors and to correct them if they are found to exist. And this has been uniformly done by this court when the questions are in any degree connected with the controversy and the silence of the court might create doubts which would lead to further useless. Lit IG at ION. Guidepost https colon slash slash supreme dot justia dot com slash case s federal us 6390 thirds v 1 the plaintiff himself acquired no title to freedom by being taken by his owner to rock island in illinois and brought back to missouri this court has heretofore decided that the status or condition of a person of african descent depended on the laws of the state in which he resided 2 it has been settled by the decisions of the highest court in Missouri that, by the laws of that state, a slave does not become entitled to his freedom where the owner takes him to reside in a state where slavery is not permitted and afterwards brings him back to Missouri. Conclusion
it follows that it is apparent upon the record that the court below erred in its judgment on the plea in abatement, and also erred in giving judgment for the defendant, when the exception shows that the plaintiff was not a citizen of the United States. And the circuit court had no jurisdiction, either in the cases stated in the plea in abatement or in the one stated in the exception, its judgment in favor of. IV1. The territory thus acquired is acquired by the people of the United States for their common and equal benefit through their agent and trustee, the federal government. Congress can exercise no power over the rights of persons or property of a citizen in the territory which is prohibited by the Constitution. The government and the citizen, whenever the territory is open to settlement, both enter it with their respective rights defined and limited by the Constitution. 2. Congress have no right to prohibit the citizens of any particular state or states from taking up their home there while it permits citizens of other states to do so. Nor has it a right to give privileges to one class of citizens which it refuses to another. The territory is acquired for their equal and common benefit, and if open to any, it must be open to all upon equal and the same terms. 3. Every citizen has a right to take with him into the territory any article of property which the Constitution of the United States recognizes as property. 4. The Constitution of the United States recognizes slaves as property, and pledges the federal government to protect it and Congress cannot exercise any more authority over property of that description than it may constitutionally exercise over property of any other kind. 5. The Act of Congress, therefore, prohibiting a citizen of the United States from Page 60 U. S. 396. Taking with him his slaves when he removes to the territory in question to reside as an exercise of authority over private property which is not warranted by the Constitution, and the removal of the plaintiff by his owner to that territory gave him no title to freedom. 2. The clause in the Constitution authorizing Congress to make all needful rules and regulations for the government of the territory and other property of the United States applies only to territory within the chartered limits of some one of the states when they were colonies of Great Britain, and which was surrendered by the British government to the old confederation of the states in the Treaty of Peace. It does not apply to territory acquired by the present federal government by treaty or conquest from a foreign nation. 3. The United States, under the present Constitution, cannot acquire territory to be held as a colony, to be governed at its will and pleasure. But it may acquire territory which, at the time, has not a population that fits it to become a state, and may govern it as a territory until it has a population which, in the judgment of Congress, entitled it to be admitted as a state of the Union. 4. During the time it remains a territory, Congress may legislate over it within the scope of its constitutional powers in relation to citizens of the United States, and may establish a territorial government, and the form of the local government must be regulated by the discretion of Congress, but with powers not exceeding those which Congress itself, by the Constitution, is authorized to exercise over citizens of the United States in respect to the rights of persons or rights of property. The defendant is erroneous, and must be reversed. This case was brought up by writ of error, from the Circuit Court of the United States for the District of Missouri. It was an action of trespass v. Ed Armas instituted in the Circuit Court by Scott against Sanford. Prior to the institution of the present suit, an action was brought by Scott for his freedom in the Circuit Court of St. Louis County, State Court, where there was a verdict and judgment in his favor. On a writ of error to the Supreme Court of the state, the judgment below was reversed and the case remanded to the Circuit Court where it was continued to await the decision of the case now in question. The declaration of Scott contained three counts. 1. That Sanford had assaulted the plaintiff. 1. That he had assaulted Harriet Scott, his wife. And 1. That he had assaulted Eliza Scott and Lizzie Scott, his child R.E.N. Sanford appeared, and filed the following plea. Dred Scott v. Plea to the jurisdiction of the court. John F. A. Sanford, April Term, 1854. And the said John F. A. Sanford, in his own proper person, comes and says that this court ought not to have or take further cognizance of the action aforesaid, because he says that said cause of action in 
Each and every of them, if any such have accrued to the said Dred Scott, accrued to the said Dred Scott out of the jurisdiction of this court, and exclusively within the jurisdiction of the courts of the state of Missouri, for that, to wit, the said plaintiff, Dred Scott, is not a citizen of the state of Missouri, as alleged in his declaration, because page 60 U. S. 397. He is a Negro of African descent. His ancestors were of pure African blood, and were brought into this country and sold as Negro slaves, and this the said Sanford is ready to verify. Wherefore, he prays. Judgment whether this court can or will take further cognizance of the action aforesaid. John F. A. Sanford. To this plea there was a demurrer in the usual form, which was argued in April, 1854, when the court gave judgment that the demurrer should be sustained. In May, 1854, the defendant, in pursuance of an agreement between counsel, and with the leave of the court, pleaded in bar of the action. 1. Not guilty. 2. That the plaintiff was a Negro slave, the lawful property of the defendant, and, as such, the defendant gently laid his hands upon him, and thereby had only restrained him, as the defendant had a right to do. 3. That with respect to the wife and daughters of the plaintiff, in the second and third counts of the declaration mentioned, the defendant had, as to them, only acted in the same manner and in virtue of the same legal right. In the first of these pleas, the plaintiff joined issue, and to the second and third filed replications alleging that the defendant, of his own wrong and without the cause in his second and third pleas alleged, committed the trespasses, and c. The counsel then filed the following agreed statement of facts, viz. In the year 1834, the plaintiff was a Negro slave belonging to Dr. Emerson, who was a surgeon in the Army of the United States. I end that year, 1834, said Dr. Emerson took the plaintiff from the state of to be continued red link to get. Full story. I am only a guidepost to information which are resources. Most people never learn this information, because they never was put in a situation or have the heart to fight for the middle class which is poor and our poor poor people. We just don't have the know. How, because we were educated to be ignorant. Taught history that is not used in everyday life. Instead of being taught the history of commerce business and how on a business perspective our country is ran. Only a guidepost. To information all must. No. G O. V R N M E N. T. L A W. Commerce. If middle class let alone our poor poor people don't have money or credit for bare necessities, how will they ever have resources for information that could better not just individuals, but a community as a whole? It starts with education, which to educate someone is to teach them what you want them to know. Reason a lot of people will not give up their resources. They are afraid of competition and or they want the credit for the information they got. From someone else. Middle class paycheck to paycheck. Poor poor on the streets. Instead of educating ourselves. Allowing others to give us information. We want to be knowledgeable. There is nothing wrong with seeing black and white which these courts say they want to see. We have so much information we are not taught so we miss out as a people to flourish. To give people with idea and opportunity really to learn how to capitalize on their thoughts. And create generational wealth. Christopher Columbus will not help you in commerce. He will not teach you credit, law, financial stability, or how the system is ran as a whole, 80s baby. To be equal is to have the same resources as the privilege. Money shouldn't dictate the knowledge people are able to obtain. A equal society is giving all information of the system we operate and then giving people their free will to thrive or be poor. People who are poor are taught to be ignorant through the school system. To be equal, if we truly want, change, constitution, statutes at large commerce, our system as a whole must, change.